All right, everyone got a very exciting battle here today, taking on some iron hands. So you might uh, notice that uh, these iron hands look a bit different than the one you've seen on the channel. Uh, we have an opponent who has ventured up from Brass Reach Gaming to uh, play against my Tyranids. He had recently ran this in a GT uh, in our area, performed very well, and I'm fortunately, as you know, uh, wasn't able to make it to the GT, but I'm running my list that I would have brought. So it's gonna be very cool to see how it plays out. Uh, got the big Herodin, of course, coming in. So we'll go over my list and we'll cover what we got for the iron hands. It is 2,000 points of Leviathan, a battalion detachment. Uh, we got Swarm Marb with Catalyst and Proxism. This Tyranid Prime is my uh, Warlord. He has he just has double Scything Talons, um, and uh, he has Alpha Beast on him, so I have Swarm Commander as well as Strategic Adaption. So he's going to be helping me uh, redeploy and doing some other things. Oh, and he also has a Synaptic Link for those auto woundings. Uh, two groups of uh, three Warriors. This particular group has the Synaptic Link for plus one. They're just there to help out um, with um, objectives and synapses and stuff. They also do have um, Adrena Glands. I had the spare points just to give that to them, so they'll be getting an extra inch if I advance them. Two units of 10 Termagants, three Rippers, 17 uh, Gene Stealers with uh, four Acid Maws. The Acid Maws are the pink one, and then the uh, guys coming out of the floor right there. Then we have a Lictor, six Hive Guards. And a Malsaptor with his Synaptic Link to help with his Hive Guard. He also has Onslaught to give them a little bit more um, uh, adaptability to move around. And then, of course, we have the Herodin coming in here. And he has Dermic Symbiosis, so spent a CP to get the, um, the extra, well, the one and only uh, Adaptive Physiology. So that's 2,000 points of Tyranids. And uh, yeah, Iron Hands. This was my GT list for the Deckmasters tournament here just last week. I played for first, but came in fourth because of those nasty Grey Knights. Uh, I've got uh, six Dreadnoughts. We're running three Redemptors, uh, two with Macroplasma, plasma, one with the full Onslaught setup. Then you got uh, three Leviathans, all running fairly similar. Graflex Bombard, Bolt Kites, and a Siege Claw. Two squads of Incursors. Two squads of uh, intercessors with stalker bolt rifles, and then for uh, characters, we've got a character dread here, which I've given the five up. Feel no pain instead of the flat six. Two tech marines. Uh, one is my adept the Onisaya, and one is my master of the forge, and my captain in uh, gravis armor, who's a uh, master of the codex. All right, folks, here's the table we're playing on today. So we're playing Vital Intelligence from the GT 2021 pack. I'll cover the terrain here in a second, but first a big shout out to our patrons for all their support. Uh, Teos and Brian, the support means a lot to us. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a patron and getting involved in the channel here, there's a Patronic dice that will be rolling for Brian um, at some point in the game. See if he helps or hinders the Tyranids or the Iron Hands. So Vital Intelligence sees an uh, angle deployment like so here. There's a total of six objectives, uh, four along the middle here, and then two uh, in each deployment zone, which sees right here. And on the other side, um, in terms of secondaries, uh, I, I have mine. So do you know what ones you want? Or <laughs> I'm pretty good. Yeah, I okay. I so I, I went with um, Engage, Rod, and to the last. So that'll be my Herodin, uh, my Swarm Lord, and my Hive Guard. Because essentially, if they're dead, the game is over. So if they're alive, things are doing good. Um, and what, what did you want to go with? I was going to take Engage, Rod, and Oath. Engage, Rod, and Oath. So, so good choices there for the Iron Hands. Uh, and now in terms of terrain, we'll just cover that for everyone looking. Uh, anyone wondering, the trees are purely aesthetic. They're there just because it, it looks cool in the jungle mat. So just having them all and everything is just aesthetic. Pretty much just aside from that, it's just runes um, with all the standard features. So jumping into the terrain, um, the base of the terrain. And then for the runes at the back here, standing underneath here, we'll count you as in it, being behind it. Not, it'll just be obscuring. And that's pretty much it in terms of terrain. Then of course, just obscuring for that tall piece there. So we're going to roll off now, find out who gets to pick deployment zone, and then we'll come back after we've deployed and take a look. I don't want to necessarily use them because I was able to. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, so Tyranids get the, the pick of the crop here. So we'll come back after we've deployed and see how it looks and find out who's going first. We both discussed it. We both have agreed fully that whoever gets first turn is likely going to be in the uh, supreme driver's seat. We're going to add the word supreme there, and we'll come back and see. Alright folks, so I've selected this side. We're going to take a look at everything that the Tyrants have done, then check out the Iron Hand side of uh, the table. So we got 10 Termagants uh, hanging out here. Uh, we have pretty much everything right here. Uh, we have Gene Stealers, Prime, 
Hive Guard right up um, just outside of the building there, along with Warriors, the Linking Warriors here, Mal Scepter. Um, and then the Herodin deployed right up on the line, uh, again, where I have my strategic uh, adaption. I think that's what it's called, the redeploy one. I can be a little bit more flexible with him, along with these little boys here, the Termagants, uh, just chilling up on that side. Um, I didn't really want to put them up there, but he has these forward sneaking guys. These sneaky boys right up here. Um, then we have uh, one of the dreads here, Leviathan. Um, five more. These are the intercessors. Intercessors, Intercessor, yeah. And then um, the redemptors right here. Is that right? I always get the redemptors. redemptors. Yes, yes. Got those. Um, is that the forge master, this guy? Yes. That's the forge master. Yeah, so he's the flat three heels. The healer boy. Then we got intercessors there. Then we have the captain. Um, by the That's the character guy, I assume. Yeah. Uh, the other Leviathan, the other uh, Redemptor, uh, the other uh, Tech Marine, and then the other. Uh, what are they Squad of Sneaky Boys. Incur, well, Sneaky Boys, that's what we're going to call them. Uh, and then, of course, my Lictor and the Tails Rippers are popping up. Uh, so now, the biggest role of the game here who's going first? We're both nervous for this, <laughs> to say the least. So, good luck, sir. Good luck. A four. And a two. That's so you. Here, and it's first pounce. So we'll come back after turn one for the Tyrians, and I think I will redeploy a few things. All right, folks, so movement is done. The Herodin flew forward over this way. Uh, he banked uh, left <laughs> uh, over this way. Um, still in range of Swarm Lord, so the plan here is to Catalyst him with Swarmy. Uh, Synactive links up went off. They are exploding sixes, or not exploding sixes, auto wounding on sixes to hit. Uh, they move forward along with the Termagants here, both in range of Swarmy to move again. So looking to get them ahead and um, get them uh, onto the objectives. Back in this way, Synaxia Links went off. I have linked my uh, Hive Guard with the uh, reroll damage and uh, minus an extra minus on the uh, six to wound. Uh, they linked uh, the Herod in before he took off, flying away uh, for the plus one to hit. These guys just shimmied over it, along with these guys biding their time, just hanging out. Uh, and that is it um, for the turn. And in terms of redeploying, obviously these guys redeployed there if you're wondering how they suddenly appeared over there. Uh, and that is it for movement. We'll come back after psychic and shooting. Right, folks, so psychic and shooting is done. So I got feel no pain off, my, <coughs> excuse me, on my Herodin. He took a wound um, doing his uh, frenzied metabolism. He fired in and killed off uh, the Leviathan and the Hive Guard double tapped and took out a Redemptor. And that was the extent of the shooting. So a uh, good start so far. Still a lot of heavy targets to take care of though. So certainly nowhere ahead yet. These are some tough dreadnoughts. And then these guys are going to attempt to charge and at them momentarily. And these gaunts move to swarm look just um, grabbing that objective there. Uh, so we're holding that one in the middle. Then we'll come back after the charge from these gene suits against those um, uh, sneaky boys. Sneaky boys. Yes, yes. That's what we did. All right, folks. So that ends the turn. So the gene stealers wipe those guys out just to the last man. I didn't spend the two CP trying to play a little conservative with my CP. I did gain one back for this turn. So uh, with the world of trait, they killed them off. They ran back with Overrun. Uh, just enough. They're holding this objective. I just want to try and grab them uh, as much as I can where it is. Um, it, uh, it is hold two, hold three, right? Hold two, hold three. Hold, hold two, three. Yeah, yes. Two, three, one. So going to hold on to those. But that is it for the turn. So again, good damage done. Still a lot of tanky boys walking at me though. But we're going to come back after Iron Hands turn one. So you Iron Hand fans up there, we'll see if they can get their redemption. All right, movement is completed for the Iron Hand. So over this way, these guys came through grabbing this objective and have rotted. The Leviathan has come through. Um, he is against the building there, so there are some windows and the Herodin is big. Um, and then these guys uh, <laughs> have advanced through, uh, spent a command point to make their run, getting the objectives, um, which is what they needed. Uh, the two dreads here lumbering forward, no better word for it, as these guys jump up into the building to uh, protect from anything that might come flying down through the middle. And then over this way, the captain leads his hero ahead of him as the Dreadnought moves forward, ready to dump some retribution at the Tyranids. And uh, who, there's one guy, oh, he's right in there. Yeah, the Tech Marine's in there. I knew I'd forget someone. And then uh, these guys, I don't know if I said, these guys did rob this area. So that's it for movement. We're gonna come back after shooting, because no right, psychic. Folks, so that ends the shooting. Everything dumped into the Herodin. He is down to 11 wounds. So still on his top racket. Um, so he is looking healthy uh, as of right now it is looking very good with the nids had they have taken him out um that's what honestly i think this game is going to come down to in the end uh if the hair didn't fell or if i didn't kill some dreadnoughts at the start of the turn but that's it so we'll come back at the end of the turn here all right so the, the leviathan made a charge in at these gaunts killed off three of them 
uh, and then piled in just to tag them up and gain some extra movement and get closer to my line. So this Leviathan has to be dealt with. So becoming a bit of a problem in a way. So that's it for the turn. So scoring um, two for engage as well. And rod has been done. Um, did you, and you got one for oath? I get one for, for the not fall. Yes, around, yes. But I didn't kill any characters or any or Right, okay. So still um, some weakened points for the Herod in there uh, for oaths later on. But that's it for the turn. We'll come into Tyranid's turn two. Alright folks, so we have uh, completed the movement phase. We'll actually put a question out to everyone. Um, we, we both agreed on a consensus here, but I've seen it done in some tournaments, and if anyone has any other logic or uh, areas we're missing, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll re recap the turn, and then we'll go over what I'm rambling on about. So these termagants moved out this way. They rot at this section, since it's going to be a tough zone to do. Uh, and then these guys moved uh, in advance over this way. Now, if I do choose to shoot at these guys and kill a couple, I have three termagants in range of this objective. So if I can manage to kill off um, a few of them, it will at least deny that objective, if I so choose to shoot that way. Then over this way, the termagants disengage from the Leviathan. Gene Sewer's moved up to swarm him. Mal Scepter has moved forward as well. Um, so can slam a bunch of smites them and the potentially charge and just overwhelm him with bodies and attacks. Now, this is the rules interaction we were talking about. The Herodon has landed into hover. My idea was to charge in one of these guys, kill them, and overrun off the table. Uh, from what we found, the aircraft keyword um, uh, with, with its minimum move, when you, uh, which it loses when it goes into hover, the minimum move is what allows an aircraft to fly off the table. And he loses that based off the definition in uh, the rule book, so he wouldn't be able to fly off. I've seen a few people doing this um, in a few tournaments, so that was my idea to do it, but good thing we double-checked again. I want to play everything right, make sure everything done is, is done justly. So if you do, uh, there is some other area that uh, that we're missing. I'd love to know. If not, again, just want to clear concises on um, how to, to properly do the rules. Either way, he's landed. He may pop in to help um, his, uh, help, not help him, help those gene stealers. And that's it for movement. So we're going to come back after uh, psychic and shooting. All right, so that is the end of shooting um, and psychic power. So dropping the uh, Leviathan down to 10. I'm going to swarm him with the gene stealers and hopefully do... Um, do their thing in there. The Herodin also is going to come in as an insurance policy too, just to make sure uh, that he's taken care of. Uh, over this way, I killed off one of the uh, Redemptors with the Herodin um, quite handedly, and then the uh, Hive Guard, uh, rolling a little poor this turn uh, after the strong performance, uh, the first one, uh, only dropping this guy down to three. So some really good, um, I don't know, Iron Hand saves. Feel no pains. Uh, iron, flesh is weak type stuff. So that's it. We're going to move into the charges now and see how everything looks. So. Uh, Herodin and Genius Sears likely to go in. All right, folks, so the turn is over. Um, I uh, charged him with the Gene Steelers. He overwatched with his last two CP and um, thankfully only killed six of them, so they still had um, their weight of attack. But I did charge him with the Herodin, uh, who took him down to one wound, and then the Asset Moss finished him off. So that ends the turn for the Tyranids. Um, getting three for engage. Uh, I did bring my Rippers in over in the corner there. We were just talking about the Herodin, and we got, kind of forgot about them, so we brought the boys in. Uh, but that is uh, it, I believe. Um, Rod is also, again, done for this section, and to the last still stands for now. My Herodin is hopefully going to stick it around. All right, we'll come back after Iron Hands, turn two. Oh, in this corner. Yep. So Rod is here, uh, completed by these intercessors. Uh, we walk around this way. Oops, uh, tree fell over. Uh, the Redemptor on three, now six. Um, from the forge fellow there uh, the captain and the uh, tech marine uh, moved over this way then over here these guys held the objective just moving up more to um, really secure it dreadnought and these guys moving forward um, holding this objective and uh, that is it for movement so we're going to come back after the shooting uh, a psychic and shooting i'm going to mention it <laughs> all right folks the heron's alive with one wound oh man uh, he is on the ground. There is some charges that could go down, but then it's choosing between an objective or going for the Herodin potentially. And if the Herodin somehow lives, that's a big hit coming back. Over this way, these Gaunts got cooked up quite a bit. Uh, only three of them left. Uh, the Iron Snap, so okay. Then over here, these uh, Rippers uh, took a bit of a beating. Likely going to lose one to morale. I don't have any synapse of any form. But as long as I keep that one there, hopefully um, keep engaging that core. So that's it. Um, some charges going to go down. We'll come back and see how it looks. All right, folks. So the Herodin has fallen. It literally came down to a single dice roll. <laughs> a single feel no pain. Yeah, a single feel no pain after all the attacks. 
had the Herodin win, we both agreed the game would be completely over. There's still a shot here, of course. We're going to play, so it's going to be a fantastic match. But that is the end of the turn. Oh, um, as well, these uh, Termagants got uh, uh, pulled around with his arms. So, And then over this way, this Leviathan and these... And, uh, actually, just the Leviathan, I think Leviathan, it was. Yeah, they, he, he, they stepped on him. They just kind of they walked in and said, good effort. So that's two points for Os. No um, falling back had been done. And uh, kill the big baddie. And also minus five for me, technically. I lost five. I can't get five. So, moving to Tyranids, turn two. All right, folks, so movement is done. These two warriors have come out uh, on this side to go full Gandalf and then not let this big guy pass. <laughs> the lictors come in. We've rod at this section, so one more rod to uh, go. And over this way, the Gene Steelers move with Swarm Lord. Um, over this way, uh, just getting in range so they can still move around and uh, get at uh, that Redemptor. And then uh, over this way, Swarm Lord is ready to uh, charge in at that captain and again. If he makes that charge, I can hold that objective, get in base with him, and not let him get on that objective and just hold him steady there. And if he falls back, it's also cost him a point too, so kind of a little bonus. And then there's some smites between him and him to chip the captain down. Again, killing him would be the ideal situation here. And then uh, Gaunt spell back just so he doesn't get to kill them. Um, and then uh, there is some gene stealers that are going to come around. They may actually go for him. I'm not sure yet. They may fire at him and then fire at him. Because, again, this guy can heroic intervene. And that has bit me in the butt one too many times. So I will not forget about that. So we'll come back after Psychic and uh, shoot. Folks, uh, so shooting in Psychic is done. So I managed to kill off that Dreadnought um, with the Hive Guard firing in for a first volley. Double tap to kill off this guy just to keep these fellows alive. Uh, and didn't want him to heroically intervene, as I just mentioned. And uh, that was the extent of the shooting phase, except for the Gene Steelers moving again with the Swarm Lord. So we get a charge going down now at the Captain. Uh, for dramatic purposes, I need a four inch charge here. I'm gonna roll it on camera. <laughs> just to add some pressure to myself. The Gene Steelers are charging that tech guy over there. He's making it no matter what. I have no CP left, so this is why it's dramatic. All right, cool. on the... No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go wherever you want, <laughs> okay. All right, and then the Gene Steelers are, uh, well, I guess I'll just roll for them, and they have a five, so they're in either way, but we'll come back right, after folks, that. So uh, up here, the Swarm Lord and the Captain continue their duel. Uh, Swarm Lord took a wound. Captain is down to one. Over this way, the Gene Steelers took out um, the Tech Priest just barely, so it almost came down right to the last one, uh, but he is gone. So that ends the turn uh, for the Tyrion. So getting uh, three for engage. Rod is done over there, and I still have two to the last remaining. So moving to Iron Hands, turn three. So movement is done for the Iron Hands. So Dreadnought has moved forward, uh, touching the terrain there to shoot through at me Swarm Lord. He gave up a point for the captain to run away. I was really hoping to kill him. Um, and then, uh, what am I, oh yes, yes. These guys went into strategic reserve, so leaving that objective. So we'll come back after the shooting phase. All right, folks, so uh, we just quickly wrapped up the rest of the turn because uh, it was pretty bang bang. Uh, the warriors got charged by these um, Intercessor and shot at by a melted gun. Uh, missed with the melted gun. Came in, only killed off uh, one guy with two wounds. So they're still alive, which is a um, pretty huge deal for me. <clears throat> and then over this way, these guys um, got charged by the Dreadnought. He killed off four or so. Putting them at nine, so they lost their special attack. They attacked back, did four wounds to him. So good job, boys. The Leviathan fired at Swarm Lord. Uh, didn't do any damage to him, so very, very lucky on my part. Uh, and that is it for the turn. So uh, scoring... Um, Two for, engage, two, for engage. two for engage and uh no you didn't rod we went pretty quick i don't think any other rods were done were they oh no he can't he's a uh, character misses and then you're not um i didn't score any rods because no. i fell back no fell back and then two for engage and i haven't done the third rod yet gotcha okay and that wraps up the turn moving the turn it's turn four All right, so movement is done. The Lictor uh, Metabolic Overdrive to steal that objective. Uh, Ripper came forward to um, sit on the objective, but that he still holds it being offsec as well. Uh, these guys just got buffed with Swarm Commander. Uh, Warriors moved in advance over this way, getting ready to um, get the last rod until last turn. And Swarm Lord moved over this way, uh, ready to just try and sneak around and potentially um, get into the backfield or just kind of hide from the Leviathan. So that is it for movement. We'll come back after um, Psychic and Shooting. All right, folks, so that is the end of the turn. So the the, um, the warrior survived there uh, in the combat. 
And then, uh, and for shooting as well, just because we went pretty quick. These guys got killed by the Hive Guard. They, uh, they stole that objective. Uh, and then over here, the Dreadnought killed um, three of the uh, Gene Stealers. And then that is pretty much it. And then I just I just threw Swarm Lord over here, just quickly throwing him around. And that is it for the turn. So getting uh, three for engage, uh, and that is it. One for, yeah. So uh, that's the end of the turn. So we just uh, did everything pretty quickly here for the Iron Hands. Um, they, uh, the Leviathan shot in between melee and everything. I had one Steeler uh, live and uh, he's just hanging on by a thread. Over this way, the uh, Warriors killed off, uh, or sorry, the Warrior was killed off by a bolt pistol. Then they attempted to charge over here. Uh, these guys being here though, does give um, engage for two points because the boys showed up at the corner here, rotted in another corner as well as uh, stealing that objective from me. So that's it for the turn. We're going to move into Tyranids. Turn 5 is the game. It's closing. Alright, so ending off the Tyranid uh, turn here. Uh, very quickly played everything out. Uh, maxing on primaries. I uh, got my final rod with these guys over here. And... Um, <clears throat> That is pretty much it. So uh, I was going to go to fight this guy, but then the Dreadnought can come and get him. But either way, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. So, uh, and yeah. So he's either going to have to come back over here and grab another objective or, um, or do something else. So that's it. We'll come back after the Iron Hands turn. Folks, so that is the end of the game there. The Iron Hands played out the last of the turn to see if they could kill off Swarmy. He survived with four wounds, just kind of um, sneaking off to the corner there. The Warriors got diced up a bit. So the end score is 96, I think it was. Or 91, sorry. 66, that's what it is. So fantastic game. Um, the Herodin was an absolute uh, monster. <laughs> so I, for me, absolutely MVP Herodin. Uh, who would be your MVP? Oh, the Leviathans is Leviathan. the always. I mean, the boys. It's the only one that, only one of my dreads was a Leviathan that survived. So yeah, you know you got to give them the credit where it's due. But yeah, it, with the the amount of shooting that comes out of the Herodin and the, the yeah the, the swarm boys there. Yeah, the Hive Guard. Hive Guard is just you know, five turns of Hive Guard shooting. Yeah, and not only shooting but double shooting just kind of stacks up. Now the nice thing with them too, I will say, is like they, they do well, but let's say it's a Dimacaran list. Not having things to charge and not slingshot, I think, was like getting the charge distance. You know what I mean? Like charging, getting the extra move, the Leviathans makes a big deal. And, it's, and this tiered list in particular had nothing to really like let you yeah. Yeah, piggyback there was, on. There was nothing for me to come get. I had yeah, to, I had to eat it and then respond. And yeah, the list it, it really works well. Whether it's when there's smaller stuff to chunk up, yeah, and get in the way, but this didn't have it. Yeah, your, your movement was, was spot on. You, you targeted a flank and just kind of went with it. So yeah, uh, and I do th I do fully um, think that if you had first turn, I think you would have been in the driver's seat. I really think whoever had that first turn would be the Herodin wouldn't be alive turn one. Yeah, well, I could pull him off the board, <laughs> but then I have like next to nothing. So that, and that's another turn of shooting I don't get. And so it that, allows me to spread out. And exactly. Kind of so I do think control the board a little bit. Yeah, I do think these are two lists that um, very dependent on um, who gets first turn, which I mean is sure. it's a dice roll. <laughs> but on a whole, I think like each list, I think your list performed defensively well. It's just the Herodin's a big, big, uh, big hitter. But if you had first turn, I think I would have been on the um, defensive end with these guys. These guys moving forward early, like even just your movement that you got with them, I, I felt like very uh, pressure. Very pressured yeah, dude, with like pressure. one turn of movement, so it was. Oh, yeah. Only I gotta say, for all the lists I've played, I've only got seven models left, so that's that. Per, your your list performs well, and, and, it, and it does very good at, at beating down a target one at a time, which not a lot of lists take into account when they're fighting six guys. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. I appreciate that, and I'm very excited for a rematch. You have some of those. What are they called? The Dio Dio Dio. I call them Dio Dios. I don't know. Dio Dio. I, I have a Dio Dio. Dio Dio. That's what I call. And I have two uh, Relic Vulcan. Yes, yeah. I feel like they would uh, do a number on the Herodin, even if it did get first turn. I think they would. I think they would. Well, it, it gives me a, a, a five up in all of the dreads because uh, oh, okay. So That's... defensively, it's a lot better than having yeah. a three up and no in all on every venture. Yeah, and that made a huge difference when the Herodin targeted him. So. Yeah, fantastic game. I definitely look forward to a rematch. And like you said, he's evolving this list a bit more, and uh, 
I think the the Herodon's gonna have to look out so he has a target on his back and some <laughs> dear dear dreads I think we're gonna come and make him look a little chumpy but thank you so much for the game thank you for coming up it's fantastic um definitely stay tuned or we will have a rematch in the future um fantastic opponent had a lot of fun and it was great uh, seeing these two lists pair off against one another for sure